people have done um, uh, internship training programs before? In here, put, put up your hand. So internship programs, right? How many of you also have this? Is this something that everybody does? Sort of the graduation event. Some kind of graduation event, okay? So we want to talk about that, right? Okay, if you haven't done it this first year, we want to give you encouragement to do it, right? If you've done it, we want you to reflect. Like, how can it be better? How can it be more leveraged? What does better mean? Does better mean filling the room? Does better mean like you develop stronger relationship? Does better mean your interns come back? What does better mean? Right? And be thoughtful as you do. Okay? So uh, to start us off, we're going to have uh, ask uh, Lynn Trin and Maxwell Trin. They're both from the Seattle uh, chapter, right? Seattle, Washington chapter of Papa. And uh, we're going to ask them to talk. And then there are three people up here, and you are? Okay, Hong Wong. Zi Hong. Zi Hong. Zi Hong. Okay. Zi Hong from New York City. Okay, I want to thank them uh, for volunteering themselves to start our conversation. Alright? So, uh, I'm going to ask this. So we're going to talk about party time, right? Yeah. Uh, all right, so I'm already excited. Because this is the celebration um, that we all look forward to by end of an internship. And when we started our Seattle chapter two years ago, we had this enormous responsibility on our shoulders. And um, it's enormous emission that we had to carry through. Um, but we knew that this is something that is so worth celebrating. So today I want to talk about two uh, graduation events that we experienced. We not only learned from it, but we also um, wanted to let you know that we found out something really, really important that's more than just recognition for the interns. So first of all, uh, as everyone know who had established any local chapters, we always have a grand opening, right? So our first graduation was combined with our grand opening in Seattle for our Papa chapter. So as you can imagine, anytime we have a gala, like we call it, that we always like to invite uh, as many of um, elected officials and um, community leaders and as many as friends as possible so they can learn about our um, organization. And, but there are three things really important to us that, like I said, that we wanted to carry through in our graduation. That's a lot more than just recognition. And we want them to be the tradition that we carry through for all the graduations that we do for our interns. Because they have worked so hard, and we want to make sure that they have this, this way to um, not only to bring recognition to them, but also have experience to learn. So every event, every training, everything we put together, all the programs, always are addressed to our interns, because they're our, they're our boss, right? They're the one that we're trying to serve so that they can learn the most from what we offer. Graduation is not uh, excluded. It's a recognition for sure, but we also want to turn that into a learning experience. So I'll share that in a little bit. And another thing that ever since we started our chapter, we realized that we're so, we're so humbled by how little we can do by ourselves. And that one thing I pushed really hard for Seattle chapter is that we have to get out there and connect with the community leaders in our area. And we want to always include them as much as possible anytime we have an event, especially at graduation, and especially at this kind of um, um, the uh, recognition for grand opening or graduation for interns. So we have, in, we have always um, included them as part of our guest because by the time they come here, not only we learned about their resources, so we don't have to reinvent ours again. A again, we're so limited with resources in so young of a chapter that we really rely on these organizations and leaders who have already established great resources and experiences. So we want to make partners with them by inviting them to our event and learn more about them and have them learn more about, about the capacity and the 
um, ability of the interns that we can offer to them. So it becomes a really good partnership. So this is the number two things that we uh, really focus on for our graduation. So again, number one is to provide a learning experience for our interns. Number two is to bring our community leaders together, becoming our partners. And number three, as you can all guess, and Michael already mentioned it, both these things will lead to something that I don't like to personally do, which is fundraising. Because by recognizing the interns, their ability and growth through internship, and by connecting with our community resources, we have provided a value, okay? So this is a value that we want to carry through throughout our um, internship and throughout their contribution to our community. So the sponsors who come to our event, I don't have to explain to them how good our program is. They look at how our intern performs. I put them on the panel, okay? Say so they don't sit uh, in the audience. I put them all on the panel, and anyone in the audience can ask them any questions. And last, um, the, so our first graduation, we had all the APAPA leaders come afar from different states to be part of us, and they were sitting on the back panel. So we had two panels of one of intern and one of our leaders, and by the end of the panel session, everybody was so impressed how much they have grown. Okay, so they are building the value for our program. I don't need to say a word about how good we are. And we just send out the envelopes. Please contribute and support us. We would like to provide you with more interns and talents like this um, and becoming the pillars of our community. Okay, so these are the three things I would say, no matter what kind of format and no matter what kind of um, um, scale, uh, it doesn't matter if you have bare table or the cloths and centerpieces. These are the three essential things we always keep in mind as a tradition in the Seattle chapter. Um, so ability for the interns to learn through this experience. You know, by the all have to answer questions with the communities asking. Uh, number two is recognizing our community partnership and uh, letting them know that we are all there searching their help to get us connected, becoming partner. And what they have to offer, uh, we don't have to reinvent, and just let us be part of you. And number three, we pass out the envelopes and just simply ask, please support, and you see what we have done, and you heard it from these kids, and you know we have resources, please support us, so we can provide more talents like this. Um, so the second year, uh, we scaled down because we wanted to pro uh, provide more opportunities to take on more interns. So we didn't spend a lot of money on graduation, but it's one of the most effective ways I feel as any graduations I went to. So again, these three things apply. We provide a very intimate uh, setting for the interns. So they're not only they're not on the panel, but they're actually sitting with the officials and community leaders that we have invited, kind of like in your dining room, okay? So we had them all sit around the table, and there's no hierarchy, there's no head table or end table, everybody sat in the table. And each intern have to introduce themselves and ask one question. It can be anything, you, you can ask the, the color of your rabbit <laughs> at home. Doesn't matter, I want you to speak up and ask one question that's important in your life. And I want them to realize that we're not just about politics or civic engagement. We're about everything that politics apply to in our lives. So this is what um, we have initiated for the second uh, graduation. And so again, um, the community partnership still applies. They, they have sent leaders and partners and representatives to our graduation, and they became part of the panel too, or the discussion group. So that was another intimate way that we had involved them. And again, we had provided, um, we had the sponsors provided food and buffet, so that was free to us, but everybody attend our meeting have to pay an entrance fee or a membership fee to come in to celebrate with us. So that was a, another way that we had raised money. Um, so again, the parents, at the end of the graduation, all came up to us and said, I really like this format of the way that you celebrate my kids' growth through the internship. Um, they, they spoke for themselves, 
and they learned from these leaders, these great leaders, and they have started to see things from a leader's perspective. I never thought I saw that at home. Okay, so they, they took out the checkbook and filled my envelope. <laughs> okay, so um, these are the things I just want to let you know that these are the three things I feel like it really built value to have us be able to have the continued support from our parents, from our sponsors, but mostly, mostly to give the interns the opportunity to be interactive and turning that into a learning experience more than a celebration and recognition. Thank you so much. Thank you. Go ahead and ask Maxwell to speak next. All right. I think that's a good, good, good connection here. All right. Uh, so, after graduation, right? Event's over. The summer's done. But it's not just your goal to have them done for the summer. They had a good summer, and they just leave. That's not what you want. You want them to come back, right? Right? Yeah. Good, OK. <laughs> All right. So. I've been at a Papa or Seattle chapter for the last two years, going three. I was intern first year, so um, I've, I've seen every group, I've participated with every group, so I, I, think, I think I have a good idea of what makes people come back, right? So there's two distinct things that I've noticed that you really need to get the interns motivated to come back and engage more. One is to give them stuff to do. You need more volunteer opportunities outside the internship that you're able to email out and be like, hey, this is really cool gathering here, this politician or this political event. You want them to come back and be like, hey, this is something fun I can do that interests me. Now, um, obviously, there's still internships from year to year, but you want to save those internships with the rewards and the hour requirements for newer people to introduce them. And uh, you need more volunteer spaces for previous interns and allow them to come back <coughs> and year round have something to do and engage. Second thing is um, you want them to have connections. You, you need to have, while they're with you for that first year, it's really important that you make sure every intern becomes friends with the other intern. So you, your whole group um, knows each other well and think of, of each other as, as friends. And as well as that, you want to establish a connection yourself as the head or the, or the trainer with your intern. So look at you as a mentor and as a friend as well. That way, when you go and reach out to them and be like, hey, I have all these cool opportunities um, following you that you may be interested in, they're 100% more likely to say yes. Because they look at you like, this person knows what I want, and they're looking out for me. So of course they'll say yes. And if they're friends with the other seven interns you have in your group, it's obviously more fun to do an event together, right? So if one person signs up, it's also way more likely every other intern comes back and uh, joins you for I think that's it. Yeah, those are the two main things. Uh, I Connections. Have a question. Huh? question. How do you keep in touch with all the other interns? I have the numbers. <laughs> I'm their best friend, you know. So <laughs> do you use like a WhatsApp? Or do you um, do, well, do you officially we you have reach emails. out with them? So um, my mom knows all their moms on WeChat. But, <laughs> uh, so if she texts them up, yeah, whatever. And then an email list to go out to every intern. These are the events, it comes out to the interns, the moms, the volunteers, so they, they're all in the loop. And then, of course, the ones I make friends with personally, I have them on the phone. I can be like, hey, there's the event coming up, you want to join me for lunch, and then we'll go out and volunteer. Right. So that's how we Very good. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> and then, uh, is, uh, Zihan? Yeah, Zihan. Zihan. Thank you. Uh, he's from uh, Papua New York. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Zin Hong Wong, you can call me Murphy. I'm from Apapa, New York City. I was, uh, I was an intern last year, but this year I became the program coordinator. So it's such a quick transition. So for me, the graduation just happened last year. I, can sh I still remember the graduation. I can share some experience with you guys. So each year we will have a graduation or a gala. Besides our interns and the volunteers and our teams, uh, we invite the parents of interns and volunteers to join us so they can see uh, how their children changed, how they developed, how they grow uh, throughout this summer. We also invite community leaders, elected officials who accepted our interns and the elected officials 
who have who we have not sent our interns to. So maybe in the future, they will support us and start to accept our intern. And during the graduation, we will have interns uh, give a short presentation. He or she will talk uh, talk about what they did in the office and uh, what they learned from the experience and uh, how the skills will help them to uh, will help them in the future. Uh, well, you know, the graduation is the end of the program, but I think it's a new start for their professional life. They, uh, uh, during the program, they met with new people, they developed their skills, and they improved themselves. So it's a new start for them. And uh, for the alumni, we create an alumni network. Uh, for the graduation, we, we invite um, the interns from past years to join us. So all the interns come together, get to know each other, and uh, you know, just create a network. Yeah, I think that's it. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. um, let's open up. Uh, what are other people's uh, experience in terms of uh, doing graduation celebrations? We're going to start with you, and then you're next, and then we'll just go from there. So one comment I want to make is that uh, from Ohio, we also do the graduation ceremony. So we also prepare a really nice, pretty, uh, uh, like a program template of brochure or like a, you know, 10, 20 pages. We set the whole agenda, everybody's picture and their uh, retro, you know, their retro inspection and, you know, other uh, notable uh, things that's in here. And it's really nice. So every time when we go to have a table somewhere, such as uh, in uh, May, we did the voter registration two days during our local Asian festival, which is largest in the Midwest area. We have that one you know, on the table, and then people will come, and then they'll pick through there and say, oh, it's really nice. You know, I think that's a very good thing to do. Thank you very much. Yeah. Very good. Leverage. Yeah, yes. I'm going to add on to that. In that program book, we have the sponsor list, and we solicited uh, the fund <coughs> up front. So this year, we're actually thinking about it, to fund that to have more fundraising up front. But I really like the idea of passing the envelope to them on the spot. I do have a question to you. You did, um, I, I don't exactly remember your name, you did mention that your mom knows the other intern's mom. That's one yeah. thing that we noticed, right? The interns doesn't seem to re respond our emails, texts. We have to uh, connect with their parents. They shouldn't be the way, right? Well, I mean, I'm connected to them. I can text them. And they'll usually, they usually come back to me, unless they don't like me, but usually they do, so it's good. But then what if we don't have a, a local somebody call. like yeah. you that's <laughs> to act as the media? Uh, I mean, you can always go to one of your previous interns and be like, hey, do you, you want to be the intern coordinator? <laughs> and now you have someone younger. There's an argument. There's That's an true. argument. Yeah. Sometimes there's just vocal points. Um, yeah, 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 they don't share through. the same media, social media anymore. Right. They're all escaping from Facebook now. So oh, yeah, they can't That's true. That's true. But then one question I have is that, uh, you know, uh, because at least in business world, email is like a, <coughs> the default communication tool, official communication right. tool. So how do we, for, for younger people, our kids, they use group E. You know, how do we pass the information over to them effectively? When I write an email, I spend half an hour, you know, I pour my heart out, they don't read it to me. <laughs> <laughs> So we encourage um, younger people, because a lot of parents come up to ask us, uh, can our younger teens be involved, but they're not quite at the intern age? So we encourage them to become our members. That was another way they would ask for a membership. So in order to become members, you have a lot of benefits. So some of the events are free to you, and members have priorities to be considered to be interns. So not only that was a way for us to fundraise, but also it was a way for me to organize 
um, certain events, I will pass out to the members first. And then we have another group called uh, Papa Volunteers. And then, you know, for a bigger event, we involve our volunteers and they're all potential members. And so that's how I organize my email groups to reach out to them. But I agree with you, I don't always get everyone to reply back, and some of them maybe already deleted me, I don't know. <laughs> but I know, I think what Max said is very effective though, to have their age peer group to connect for you, and just reinforce sometimes. If I send out the initial email or notice, and he can follow up, and sometimes they reply to him, but if it's a, uh, more, it's, if it's a really um, meaningful event, actually a lot of our members have always been constantly involved. Um, that's, one, that's another way that we keep track of our alumni and yeah, yeah it's sustain important. this relationship. It's important that if, if you cannot reach the kid, it is still always better than to reach the parent than not reach anyone at all, right? So the email list is still probably the most professional and official way to at least somehow secondarily get in touch with the teacher. So actually, I put the parents' email contact too in my member group, so they, the parents and the kids, they will both get the same email. Good idea. So this is always an ongoing challenge, right? <laughs> True, yeah. course, right? So, uh, so expectations is important, right? A lot of the interns, they're just passing through, right? Mm -hmm. And you get the privilege of working with them for one summer. You add some value to them. They're on to the next thing. They're busy with it, right? But you can look for opportunities. You can look for the intern that says, hey, do you want to be involved in the future? Right? And you see some real examples here, right? right? You see who's the person that's kind of the other interns really respect this person, right? If this person asks, at least they could help ask, right? You can have some tools. You can invite them to come back to speak. Right? A lot of people like those opportunities. Right? If they ask them to come back and volunteer, and uh, we need somebody to clean the table. Well, how exciting is that? <laughs> right? If we don't want to do it, why would they want to do that? But if you ask them and say, yeah, your perspective is really important. You really, you know, you can touch the other students. We really feel like you have. So the more empowered they are, in your program. The more you let them do their thing, we do it because we think it's fun, frankly, right? We do it because it's satisfying, right? And they're the same way. If they feel like, I'm being told by my mom to do it, that's not too good, right? They might still do it, but that's not the yeah. best way, right? Especially if they get old, right? Okay? But if you could fit them in, and you have a culture. This is where culture comes in. Because you have an internship program culture. What's your culture like? Does your culture believe in the young people and try to empower them? Or do you just talk about it? What does that look like in reality? How does that feel? Right? All that has to do with it. And then just to be realistic, they're kind of busy. Yeah. They're going to college. They've got lots of things. Sometimes even if they want to, they're not available. But depending on where you leave, sometimes they come back to your family, yeah. right? So, so, so we have long-term plans. This is we have long-term plans for you. We have long-term plans for your children too, right? We could wait ten years, five years. You never know. If there's something in them, right? They might come back and say, "This is the right time. Now I want to do what <coughs> you did, what you did for me." You see what I'm saying, right? So don't give up on them. Keep them engaged, let them know what's going on, create these opportunities to come back to help in whatever is the right way for them. All right? Yeah. Um, I did realize something that President Michelle did for our chapter. Um, right after I finished my internship program in 2015, was that um, she invited. For 20, the 2016 year, there was, there's another girl who also comes back and volunteers as well. Um, she's also passionate about civic, um, civic leadership, uh, but she, I've also not close with her. So I, I guess that connection between interns throughout multiple years is important, as well as group chats as well. Peer mentoring mm -hmm. is powerful, yeah. right? Yeah. 
if you want to be elaborate, you can create a big sibling, small sibling program. Yeah. You know, little things like that. And then you can see, give them those opportunities because they want to be helpful. Yeah. Humans are like that. Yeah. Uh, Houston chapter, uh, each year we do this uh, so-called closing ceremony right after the internship in late July. And uh, the first program is always the national anthem, seen by all interns on stage. And we always have a volunteer, four band uh, uh, example, orchestra. You know, it's really high school or middle school students. They play violin, cello, you know, all those classical music. About 20 of them, you know, they stay on the side. So they play, and uh, so the intern will sing national anthem. And uh, at the end, during the lunchtime, we supply food. They will perform some musical pieces. So the first year, the response was very good. The, the newspaper uh, journalists, the media, all reported, said a very warm and a pleasant atmosphere. So we did the second year as well. And uh, this year, of course, Thank you very much. Very good. Very good. Um, for the Solana chapter, we also uh, have a program that we have available at it, the event. We call it a gala and a celebration of our young leaders. Mm -hmm. So to them, we tell the interns it's about them. What do they want? And in the past, they've had, um, they've done a video, a two minute video about themselves, where they interned at, what they learned, just briefly, so they get to see themselves on the screen and um, and everyone gets to know what they did, so it's a proud moment for them. Sometimes even 30 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Even 30 seconds, right? Yeah. It's amazing how much people can say and share in 30 seconds. Great, great example, yes. Um, tri uh, apart from Tri Valley chapter, the first three years, uh, we call it intern graduation uh, ceremony. So um, uh, we invite the uh, interns, uh, just like going through graduation, and make a, a couple of minutes presentation about what they got out of the internship program. Uh, but then we uh, got a coaching from CC uh, to uh, ask us to consider using the uh, event as fundraising. So uh, last year we started doing something called gala celebration also. Um, and uh, there's um, some uh, good results, uh, uh, but still if we are not expert in fundraising, and so I'd like to hear other people how. how yeah, so the yeah. fundraising aspect. Nonprofits is an aspect of life, right? And so let's talk about it. Let's talk about fundraising. Yeah, please. I have a question. Um, their graduation is supposed to be in the, the end of summer. But yeah. we have officials invite us to be a volunteer in the election. Then. So that's going to be the end of the year. Yeah, for us, uh, we definitely have it uh, in uh, second or third week, August, before the interns uh, go back to school. Uh, that, that is graduation, uh, because our internship is summer. Uh, but if there's other internship program that runs through the whole year, it's a different kind of uh, time yeah. frame. How about the end of year, if somebody needs our help? So, so those yeah. are really good, good questions. Um, I can tell you what we do, right? Which is, um, even though you know I've been in political life for close to thirty years, we keep it very separate. Right? There are just some things we don't do, right? 
and uh, we send people out to do things because of the experience. Right? And so when they are graduated from your program, right, then they're really not in your program anymore. They're graduates, they're alumni. They can do whatever they want. And if you organize them, you should organize them from a personal perspective, right? They should, it should be sounding like, oh, a papa, right, is organizing people to do partisan campaign. That's not good, right? You can say, hey, we'll do, we're, we're calling, we're supporting this person, but I'm not really doing a papa right now, right? I'm not really doing that, right? Even though the few people, they're all from a papa, right? But you say that very clearly, this is not a papa. This is not part of our thing, right? And then, if you like, please come join us. And then, this, this is the reason why I'm doing it, right? Then you do it. You have to keep it very conceptually <coughs> separate. And then you have to be clear in your mind, right? How to keep it separate. It's just very easy, right? When you go to work, work's money is your work's money. Your money is your money, right? So we're used to keeping that separate, right? When there's a pencil at work, you can't take it home. You see what I'm saying? So that's a concept that we have to practice all the time. And it's like this, and sometimes it's easy. Right? So you have to have that understanding, and then that discipline to ask ourselves, what is the best practice? Right? How do you do it, right? But then I can say, hey, I'm gonna support you as an individual. I am just gonna volunteer in your campaign right now but I'm not an individual, right? But that person knows that I am also a papa or act, a poly or whatnot, right? You can give the credit to them and say, hey, I want to support you, but, you know, and they're going to say, oh, how, how, how can I repay you? You can say, oh, yeah, yeah, you sure you just said that? Yeah, you can. You can help that organization. <laughs> you can help them. And then you do it, you know, all the right way for the internship. So you have to be clear. And then the other thing is just timing questions, right? You can't say yes to everything, right? You're not always looking for opportunities, for which ones that we could say yes to, which ones we cannot say yes to, right? And what would be appropriate, right? In the end, people look to other people, and if you know what you're doing, then people respect you. Does that make sense? Right? right? And you're very clear. And you can come out, I, a lot of times I do this too. Say, hey, when I'm wearing this hat, I really should be doing that. I, I don't want to do that like that because that's my perception. And I said, I'm sorry, you know, right now I'm representing this organization and, and I just can't, can't, can't wear my shirt and take a picture with you. That would not, my organization, my board would give me help and they should, right? And that's just not good. So when we understand things like that and we tell them straightforwardly into their face, most of the time, they really appreciate it. They go, yeah, I get it. And if they don't get it, then they're not worthwhile, <laughs> right? You see what I'm saying? But if they go, okay, I said, I, I, I'm glad you got it, right? I'm glad, glad you got it, and they respect it. Sometimes you have to say no. Yeah. Uh, so, it's <clears throat> a question. It looks like well, we are uh, set up uh, to go beyond something. We start with three, and some of the offices, can only take the intern yeah. after some right. So we, we didn't just plan to go right, right, right. And I think there are also great alternatives. Right. After some. Great. So the question is, uh, how should we do right. graduation? Okay. Yeah. No problem. Um, so how do you do graduation? So somebody else was asking me a question. So I, I should have made this more clear. So uh, I'm really a poly, right? A separate organization from CLUSA. So my role here is really as a kind of a consultant, as a trainer, right? All the important decisions go to Anthony, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I know that he, you know, he has a heart of gold, right? And he really wants to help. So somebody was mentioning, oh, you know, because we started late, can, can, can our program go beyond summer? We suggested summer just because that's when the students are most available. But I talked to some people and said, the students are local students. They're going to local community college, going to local college. We could have it. It works after that. 
So he's the person to talk to, and he's going to make an adjustment. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he'll say he'll work with you, yeah, right? So, so, so those questions that you have specific to your program, <coughs> I'm the wrong person to ask. He's the right person to ask, and he will help you in a very direct way. I have a very helpful number too. And then connected with that, if you're allowed to have your program beyond, right? Then you have your graduation beyond too. And then you're looking at what's a good time, right? Right after that, especially some folks, his vision is to allow year-round programs. So I'm saying that let's keep it simple. Let's do some programs. And it's a little bit easier to manage, but as groups mature, some people feel like it's easier for us to do year-round or a different time or whatever reason, right? Then the trajectory is to allow them to do that. So he's the right person to talk. I don't know if you want to say anything. Uh, yes, it's a big maybe. Uh, like someone asked me, it depends on the organization need. Uh, my vision is like it should not limit to just two months or that three months. It is up to each of your organization and also how your relationship work with the local government. Uh, you make it uh, the best because at the end of the day, we want to achieve is to build a relationship with local government, inspire uh, the intern, and then encourage them to <coughs> engage directly in their own community. So time-wise, or, uh, or which month of the year, it is not the most important to us, but more important to all of you, which are the period that will work better. You will be the one who decide and let us know oh, this couple of months actually work best to our city in here because of whatever, because each, each state, each city have different kind of timeline on certain positions, certain um, uh, social event I call, uh, such as now everyone is get ready on the census outreach, the voter registration. So those are go by when is your uh, election day, when is the registration day, to determine what will be the better for you. So I could not say one size fits all, but you will be the one that will kind of custom make for, for your, your own city. I said, Always keep in mind, again, what are the goals? The goals is to do a great internship program where the interns get trained, right? The goal is to empower the community. How you do it, what's your local condition, right? Do you go to state level office? Do you do local office? Do you do government office? Do you do this? It depends on your clients in a way. The students are your clients. What are their needs? What are their opportunities? You're the people that come together to make the best right, experience for yourself and your people. Okay? Uh, very good. Let's take one more comment. Yeah. I um, have a quick question. Actually, do you guys give them the certificates after they graduate? Mm -hmm. yeah, of course. Yes. Yes. Do we have a template from this, or we have to create our own? Uh, if you need one, we can give you one. Because <laughs> we have so many good examples, they can, we can borrow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we also Are you need a yeah. No, I'm a uh, UCA Illinois. Uh, yeah. yeah. I have a quick, quick comment for your question, though. But uh, we, this is our first year. But what we always do, every year we do a Jiaozi Festival in That's Illinois. Great. And then what we do, what we do the fundraising is uh, we have a program book, like they said, and then we kind of sell it, okay? You have a sponsor, you say half page, a full page of your company. So that's normally we can get some money. Okay. That's mm -hmm. that's good. Just be very creative. I've even seen <laughs> Jiaozi <laughs> parties, <laughs> right, where everybody's at a station. And they, they put together Jiaozi from scratch. <laughs> and a lot of these folks, they've never done it before. And somebody teach them, oh, you stir, and then you, you wrap like this, and then we cook it, and then we all eat it together. So you've got to be creative and think different things to do. Yeah. One thing that I've used um, is for your gala is to have auction items, and one of them, I ask uh, our elected officials, whether it's the federal level, or state level, local level, lunch whip. Yeah, great. And um, because they, they, they love that. Yeah. yeah. Some people Thank give you. money just for a photo with them. Yeah, so 
lots of ways. Yeah. So just about fundraising. So for the past 10, 12 years, I've been in government relations, corporate donations on the corporation side, and now on the professional side of raising funds. One thing to understand is that big companies typically have two budgets. One's their shareholder money, which is a lot less, and then they have foundation money, which is a lot more. Sometimes, and I think it's a cultural thing, where we go to the elected official and ask him or her to ask for donation. What happens is that you lock the organization's hand in giving you more money because that money is very limited. So to get passed by that, and I, I know we haven't worked on the Solano chapter, what we want to do is list some, some of these elected as honorary members because then once you sent that invite to them and they see that this elected official is on your honorary board, they don't have to do anything, they'll give the money to your organization from their foundation, which is charitable. It is not a political ask or a behest. And then they'll tell in a different way to the elected, hey, we saw that you support this organization and we gave them instead of $1,000, $5,000. So I think that's something that I've always, when I was at PG, <coughs> told new nonprofits to do it. See if you can get like the mirrors on your honorary report, because that makes a huge difference when they're reviewing it. Thank you very much. Thank you. So uh, fundraising, there are yeah. many levels of sophistication, right? And so just like everything else, our challenge is to become as sophisticated. Last comment. Yes, so uh, one comment about fundraising. We have been really trying hard, trying to figure out how to get money, maybe because CSUSA wants to support 100% of our Actually, uh, uh, that's, it's really useful to learn how to fundraising. So something that we are we want to try this year that's new is that, that you know kids when they go to a school there's a yearbook. You know, middle school is like 30, 40 years. When they go to high school, it's like 80 years, and everybody <coughs> orders that, right? So we want to pre-order our <coughs> program celebration uh, booklet for a moderate ten dollar or fifty. $15. We haven't really decided on the number yet at this point. But then we want to give you a try and see how where that's going to run with the, Good. you know, the interns, the attendees. Try, right? Experiment is good. And some experiments work, sometimes they don't, right? Now one thing I can tell you uh, <coughs> that's going to be very helpful, I think, uh, a lot of people, when they fundraise, right, when somebody says no, right, just remember this. When somebody says no, you ask them. When you hear no, your mind actually says it means what? Yeah. Not now. <laughs> yeah. right? Not yet. Yeah. Not, Not yet. yet. <laughs> okay? Okay? So, yeah, it's good. So that's an important aspect. So uh, give yourself a round of applause. Give up. <laughs>